In this section, we'll share levers SEAs can use to help LEAs prioritize and sustain effective interventions. On the next screen, you'll be able to recognize the levers, which you saw in the last session, by the icons you see on the screen. And so my colleague Jessica will share strategies and reinforce the levers as she goes. Thanks, Jack. Jessica Swanson here with National Center Partner Edgenomics Lab at Georgetown. We'll flip to the next slide, please. So as we think about difficult financial decisions, we start with data and evidence, and then we use those to help us shape our priorities, right? develop priorities. Then we can consider trade-offs and weigh this with input from our community. So let's dive in. If you flip to the next slide, I wanna make sure we share a little bit more about some of these levers. So we would say one lever to start with as you think about is technical assistance, and then another is grant making thinking about these to focus LEA efforts on the SEA's North Star. So what would your North Star be? Could be something like reading recovery, middle school math recovery, or another state goal. And if the SEA sees that there are interventions they've been promoting or supporting that LEAs are really investing in that are showing promise, spotlight those in communications or convenings, case studies, resource guides. Targeted grant opportunities like replication grants can also support LEAs in planning and carrying out sustainability activities aligned to the North Star. And technical assistance aligned to the North Star can also support research-based interventions. Flip to the next slide, please. A really key strategy we would also suggest for supporting LEAs or schools if you're a unitary system is providing differentiated supports through monitoring and technical assistance. So SEA might sort districts by ESSER or ESF spending, or if you're a unitary system, you might sort district schools uh, or regions into a quadrant system. And the way we've sorted them here, you can see, let's look at the top right, that quadrant is have spent most of their funds and have good outcomes versus the bottom right, have spent most of their funds and have low student outcomes. And as you plot the LEAs or schools, again, if you're a unitary system, in a quadrant like this, it can help you identify the right next steps in terms of support. So for instance, if you are an LEA that has spent most of the money, you might be receptive to support around trade-off or prioritization discussions. And if it's an LEA that has not spent very much money, it might be a good one to support with thinking about continuing spending advice on that. So a good strategy here is to plot those LEAs by spending, and by outcomes, or again, schools or regions if you're a unitary system. If we go to the next slide, please. Another strategy that the SEA can consider is using convening power, this lever, through partnerships and technical assistance to encourage prioritization conversations. So you could leverage new or existing partners, particularly such as partners that you've been working with to help those districts most in need of support. And you can convene districts that are similarly situated. This is another option. You could convene them based on similar achievement or rate of spending, or districts that have invested in similar interventions. And these convenings could be really structured like a community of practice or less formal. And you can convene them to think about how can they work together to consider what to prioritize and sustain. And there are tools that have been shared such as the ESSER Hold'em today or the GRID and the logic model that you can use in these convenings to help districts work together to confront these challenges. If you flip one more slide for me, please. Some states have laws that allow districts to carry forward general operating funds from state and local sources, and others are considering changing existing statutes or using regulatory flexibility like waivers and states can offer this flexibility to give districts some guidance in making sure that they're aware of sustainability options. We've been compiling data on what current uh, uh, policies or statutes are. If you're a unitary system, we'd love to hear what your policy is as well. We don't have that data, but we'd love to get it. And again, replication grants can also provide an opportunity to continue promising interventions. So thinking about how can we be sustainable through leveraging levers to smooth out funding over time, whether that's the regulations or through grants. We can go to the next slide, please. 
And last, and I'd really like to make sure we take a moment on this one, thinking about using partners, technical assistance, and policy levers to promote clear and transparent communication about challenges ahead and available supports. So SEA finance and programmatic staff can work together. Sometimes these teams don't interact as closely as they could, but it's really an opportunity to partner to create coherent technical assistance to share tools and strategies. And we've seen this really powerfully in some SDAs where staff that had previously reported feeling siloed came together to support planning. Another lever here is using transparent language to prepare interested parties for and engage them in discussions around the trade-offs. So we had that visual at the beginning about weighing community feedback, but being really transparent with all of these community stakeholders to bring them into the conversation as we think about the trade-offs and moving forward. And then last, we'd suggest that SCAs can really regularly publish publicly available student achievement data and ESSER or ESF spending details. So publishing these data can also really support uh, a transparent communication about the challenges ahead. So these are some of the levers that SEAs can take now to support the LEAs in their state's 